Hello everyone, welcome back. In this lecture, we will learn to perform logistic regression using R. Logistic regression is a classification method. And today what we will do, we will try to classify tumor sample or rather images of tumor samples uh, and uh, we have and we want to classify them into either malignant tumor or non-malignant tumors. Before I go into the details of how to perform it using the logistic regression in R, let me give a brief uh, story behind this uh, problem that we are dealing today. So, usually uh, 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 what people do, people do by biopsy for a tumor sample. For example, the data set that I will be using is a breast cancer data set and here you have uh, biopsy samples and this biopsy sample a pathologist will look under the microscope and then what they are looking for, they are looking for aberrations in the shape and morphology of cells and the types of different cells present there. Based on this information and the knowledge they have, they usually will decide, uh, they will flag whether the tumor is a benign one, a non-malignant one or a malignant one. Nowadays, what we are people are uh, trying that if I can, if we can use machine learning to actually analyze these microscopic images and decide automatically whether a particular tumor sample is malignant or not. So, uh, what I have done, I have downloaded a data, uh, data, data set, I have given the link of that data set in the script, you can download it. Uh, it is a breast cancer tumor uh, biopsy data set and it has lots of features. What they have done, they have digitized these biopsy samples, microscopic images and then from each of these digitized image, they have extracted different features, lots of them. For example, different features for morphology, area of the nucleus, uh, radius of the nucleus uh, and then they have other features like uh, grainy, strict texture and all these things and all these data are labeled, means they are labeled either as malignant or benign. I have cleaned up the data and created a separate file, uh, a CSV file in that and what I have kept, I have kept this malignancy label, right. Uh, so, uh, here I call 1 as a label that means the sample is malignant whereas, uh, it is 0, if it, the label is 0 that means the sample is benign or non-malignant and I have only kept two features from the data set. One is the area of the nucleus rather the mean area of the nucleus of cells in that image and the mean radius of nucleus of cells in that image, right. So, based on these two, I will try to classify tumor sample either malignant or non-malignant. Now, if you remember during classification problem, it is uh, 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 what we do, we usually divide data set into a training data set and a test data set and that is what I have done. I have randomly picked a handful of that data as a test data and kept that separate. I will create the logistic regression model classifier uh, using the uh, training data set only which is large in size and then I will use it upon the uh, test data. So, let us go into R studio and perform the analysis. So, the first thing I will do, uh, I will read that data and I will explain a bit. So, I have a, a, as I said, I have separated the data into training set and um, test set. So, I have a CSV file train underscore cancer dot CSV, I will read it with using read dot CSV and assign that data to uh, train variable. So, let us check the train variable data. So, it is three column and it has 470 observation and you can see the first column is mal, right, that is whether malignant or not and it, it has the labels, right. So, it, uh, if it is 0, the first sample is 0, that means it is non-malignant and when the third sample is 1, that means the malignant sample. And then the second column is the radius, average radius of the uh, nucleus in that sample and the third variable is area of average area of nucleus of the cells in the sample. So, what I will do first, I will try to classify these samples, whether they are malignant or not malignant based on the area data only right. So, I will have a binary classification with, with respect to a one single uh, predictor that is the area. So, before I go into performing logistic regression for that, I want to plot the data so that we can understand uh, uh, how you want to perform the logistic regression. So, again I am using the plot function and he, it is now you must have learned how to plot it. So, on the horizontal axis I want the area and the vertical axis I want the uh, mal variable and uh, I am labeling them and using color codes. So, let me plot it. So, 
So, if I zoom you can see, see there is some sort of segregation of data, right. So, on the vertical axis what I have done, see the sample which are labeled as non-malignant they are 0, that means their probability of being malignant is 0. So, all those samples are along this 0 line, right, 0 vertical line. Whereas, those samples which are labeled as malignant, that means their probability of getting uh, of being malignant is 1. So, that is why rather than putting the vertical axis as label, what I am writing here is that the vertical axis is probability of being malignant, right. And that is what we do in logistic regression. If you want to know, recapitulate that, please go back to the lecture of logistic regression that we have done earlier. So, if you look into the data, uh, 470 data, you can see uh, the when the area is small, right, most of the majority of them are non-malignant, whereas there is some overlap, but still majority um, of uh, malignant tumors sample have larger area, mean area of our nucleus, right. So, I want to fit some sort of sigmoidal logistic uh, curve here, right, and that is what I will perform using logistic regression, okay. So, let me go back and uh, now perform the logistic regression model, right. To perform logistic regression, what I will do? I will use the GLM function, this is called generalized linear model function, right. And I will ask it to perform logistic regression. Now, just to remind you in logistic regression, what we have? We have an equation which is called logistic equation which is equal to uh, is, uh, something like this P the probability in this case the probability of being malignant right is equal to 1 divided by in denominator you have 1 plus e to the power minus A into A plus B into X right. So, this one is actually my logistic equation and I want to fit this to the data, right. And what is unknown here? I have to calculate this A and B. If you do some sort of algebra, you can easily rearrange the term and you can see that it will become A equal to A, A plus B into X equal to ln of P divided by 1 minus P. P divided by 1 minus P is the odds. So, A plus B into X is equal to log of or ln of odd, right. So, I have to calculate this value of A and B from the data, fine. So, uh, how do I do that? As I said, I will use the GLM function, generalized linear model function, right. And uh, I have to define certain uh, arguments for that. Just like the linear model, the first thing I have to define, I have to define the model. So, what I have to define? I have to define in that case, uh, what is the dependent variable and what is the independent variable. So, the mal, that is my dependent variable or response variable and after tilde I have written area, area variable is the independent one. So, area is the x in this equation, right. What will be the data? Data will be my training data set that I have stored in train and by family I am written binomial. So, by writing family equal to binomial, you are telling GLM algorithm, GLM function that see you have to perform logistic regression. And this whole result of logistic regression will be assigned and stored at in the model called log it dot area. So, if I execute it, I have executed and now let me check the summary of this, summary output of that. So, just like any linear regression model, linear model you have created here, here also we have the column for estimated values of coefficient, then a statistical test data and I will focus on those. So, the, here in the first column you have the estimated variable. So, the intercept right A is equal to minus 3.57 it has estimated and it has done a statistical test and the probability is very low it 10 to the minus 16. So, that means this intercept is a statistically significant one. The coefficient for area the B in my equation is equal to 34.7225 and it is also statistically significant right. So, that is good enough for me to proceed. There is another interesting thing that it report, it is called uh, uh, Akaike information criteria AIC, I will come to that later on when I will use that for model comparison. So, uh, this is what we have got. So, that means uh, I can say that uh, 
it has performed logistic regression now. Uh, the both the coefficients should be there, they are statistically significant. So, now I would like to plot this model on an overlay on the original data, right. To do that, I will again have to create vectors and I have to create the call the predict function. Uh, so, what I will do, uh, I will create a vector for input data, right. So, area is the input, the dep independent variable. So, I am creating a v vector using the sequence function where I am uh, setting a data set, creating a data set starting from 0 to 0.4. Why 0.4? Let us zoom into the figure. See, we have data up to around 0.4 something like that. So, I want to uh, create a list of data or vector up from 0 to 0.4 and with an increment of 0 0.01. So, I create a v. Now, I will use this a v, right, and I want to calculate the p, right. So, this x in this equation, this is my logistic equation, I want to calculate p, I know the value of a and b, I calculated them by logistic regression, right, and this x, for x I have uh, decided different value and store that here in a v, right. So, first I have to get the a and b, I could have copied and pasted, but I have tried to generalize it. So, that if the number value of a and b changes for regression to regression, still we can use this script. So, what I am doing, see this uh, logit model, if you look into, it has lots of objects, right. So, in the coefficient, if you call, see in the coefficient, there are two variable, named variable, intercept and area. So, using the coefficient function, coef function, actually I can fetch this data from my model, right. And it will fetch both these things, intercept and area. And then again, I can from that fetch intercept separately and area separately. So, that is what I am doing here in this line of the script. I am using coef function to get the coefficient from my logistic regression model that I just created and from that I am fetching only the data for the intercept variable and it has written the name as in, uh, in the round bracket that is why I have to write the round bracket also here within the apostrophe. And the second line I am fetching for data for b. How I am doing it? Again I am using the coefficient function and applying it on my logistic model that I have created and I am fetching only the area data. So, if I execute both of those. I get the value of a and b here. You can see a is minus 3.5, b is uh, 34.7. So, now I have got a and b. So, what I will do? I will create uh, a vector which will store the value of p and I will call that pv. And how I am doing that? So, I have, I know the value of a and b. So, I have to give each value of this a v vector as an input as x and calculate the corresponding value of p using this equation. I can do that one by one, but I have almost 40 data points. So, I have, that means I have to calculate this 40 times, I do not want to do that. R has the advantage that it can actually repeat this on a vector, right. So, a v is a vector and I give that as a vector itself. So, look at this line. I am saying P v is actually equivalent to or equal to assigned to 1 divided by 1 plus exponential in the bracket I am writing minus a plus b into a v. So, the input is a v the vector. So, when it will this equation will be implemented, it will throw the output also as a vector. So, for each value of a v in a v, I will get a corresponding value in P v. So, if I uh, execute it, you can see here, a v has 1 to 41, 40, uh, 40 values. Similarly, for each of these value, it has calculated p v which has 40 values, right. So, these two vectors have the same length. So, now what I will do, I will plot this a v and p v and draw a smooth line and overlay on the existing plot. So, I am using the lines function which will draw a smooth curve and my input data is a v and p v. I am using color blue and line width 2. So, let me zoom. You can see we got the standard logistic regression type uh, curve here. So, now let me move to something uh, important here. See, I have got this uh, curve. Now, how should I now make a decision whether a particular sample is malignant or not? 
So, do that I have to decide a threshold. For example, I can say okay, when the probability is 0.5, so then I have a particular value of area. So, if the area, the mean area of, of nucleus in a particular tumor sample is bigger than val that value of area, obviously the probability will be bigger than 0.5 and I will call it a malignant sample, right. So, that means I have to calculate that threshold area. So, how I am doing that? Here I will do that. So, I know the uh, equation P equal to this, the logistic equation. If you set P equal to 0.5 and do some algebra, it will come that this will be equal to this value of x will be equal to minus A by B, A and B we have calculated. So, I will uh, calculate that and print it. So, the value of that threshold area is 0 0.1028. If the amine area of a tumor sample's nucleus, cell nucleus is bigger than 0 0.10, then you will call that sample now as a malignant sample as per your logistic model. So, I want to put a vertical line on this plot, on this plot representing that threshold. So, what I will do? I will call the abline function because abline uh, overlay a straight line, right? And I will say that draw a vertical line, and that vertical line will have a value thresh dot area, the threshold that I have calculated, and I am using gray color for that, and line width is 2. So, if I execute that, here you have you have this vertical line. So, that means any data beyond this vertical line on the right hand side are all malignant, below that vertical line everything is benign. Fine, good enough. So, now visually I can see it, but I have to evaluate the goodness of this model and usually the goodness of a logistic model or any this type of machine learning model is done uh, using what is called uh, classification model. We use usually what is called confusion matrix and so let us see how I can create that here. So, what I will do, uh, I will use now the same training data set that I have used and I will put as an input to my logistic uh, regression model. I have created the logistic regression model. Now, I will use that training data set itself as an input to that and calculate the uh, probability, right. And that probability will be stored in P1 variable. So, that is what I am doing here. I am using predict function and I am uh, using the log logit dot area, the logistic model and train as the input data and I am saying that, okay, calculate the response. So, it calculates those, those values, right. And if you see those values will be uh, P1, those values are some fractions, these are probabilities, right. Now, I want to compare these values with respect to the value of mal for each sample. So, for each sample now I have calculated the probability. Now, the value of mal for each sample varies from 0 to 1, right? That is also a probability. It is either 0 or 1, right? So, what I will do is that I will now based on this p value, the probability value, I will classify my training set sample whether it is malignant or not. So, what I will do? I have decided that if the probability is bigger than 0 0.5, it is malignant. So, I am calling if else function and I am giving some argument. I am telling that see if P1 for a sample is bigger than 0.5, then you call it 1, that means it is malignant, otherwise you call it 0. And this whole data you store, store in a vector C1, right. So, I am using a if else function to decide whether each of these sample for which I have predicted the probability, whether they are 1 or 0, malignant or benign. So, I do that. Now, this C1 value, these are either 1 or 0 and already in my original training data, these tumors are labeled as 1 and 0. So, I will compare whether my original labeling of 1 matches with my predicted value of that sample, uh, predicted level of that sample of not. So, I will create a table, right. To create that table, I will use a table function. Now, I will not go in details of what the table function is doing. Once I execute, it will be very easy for you to understand. Just let me tell you what is the arguments here. The first argument is, it is a named argument I am giving to the table. I am saying the predicted variable is C1. Yes, that is my predicted thing. Either it is 0 or 1, that is I am predicted for each sample. And the actual one is the mal variable in my training data set. That is why train dollar sign mal and I want to create a table and I want to print the table. So, I am printing that, uh, creating and printing it here. 
let us look into the table it will be much clear so it is a 2 by 2 matrix 2 by 2 table and the, in actual there are two factors 0 and 1 because my samples are either 0 or 1 malignant or non malignant and the predicted level is also 0 1 so you can see the first one is 274 actual is also 0 predicted level is also 0 that means there are 274 samples in my training data set which are actually 0 benign and my prediction is also 0 that means they are benign whereas 135 samples are there which are actually labeled in my original data set as malignant and my predicted is also malignant so there are some false negative and there are some false positive here so based on this actually i can calculate my sensitivity and specificity what is sensitivity and specificity specificity is also called selectivity or true negative rate that is equal to true negative number of true negative in my confusion table divided by true negative plus false positive and that is what I calculate here table is a matrix right so this is a uh, matrix right so I am calling true negative is at 1 1 1 row column row right so there is true negative because both of them are 0 actual is also 0 predictive is also 0 so true negative so I am calling tab 1 I am fetching 1 1 value that means it will fetch 274 and then what I am doing I am summing all these two value of the first column 274 plus uh, 20 fine that is why I am writing tab no row, row number is given the column number is given so it will sum all the rows for column 1 and I will print that data so let me check what is the specificity so specificity is 0.93 that means the specificity is 93 percent it is quite a good one let us check the sensitivity sensitivity is also called a recall value or hit rate or true positive rate it is defined as the ratio between true positive and true positive plus false negative right so how do I calculate it again I use the same uh, indexing of table so I am taking table 2 2 that means table 2 2 means second row second column this is 137 this is the true positive right because actual is also 1 predicted is also 1 divided by sum of the values of this second column because this is true positive this one is false negative so I have to sum this together and I am doing this sum together and that is in the denominator let me calculate and print that so the space sensitivity is 0.76 that means 76 percent it is not very high but with this data set that I have curated I believe this is quite a good enough now what I have done till now I have created a model logistic model where I have a binary problem yes no malignant or not and I have only one predictor but remember in my data set I have two predictor mean area of the nucleus of cell as well as the radius also right so now I want to create a model regression model again logistic regression model again using both the predictor I will use the same GLM function right but what I will do I will define the model differently so what I am doing here so here I am calling the GLM function and I am telling the model model is mal tilde area plus rad the radius variable so I am asking the GLM function that see now you have to do the logistic regression with respect to two predictor area and radius data is the same training data set and the family is binomial because I want it to perform logistic regression so uh, here I execute it let me clean the console a bit so I execute the regression logistic regression and I print the summary so here the first column is for the estimated uh, parameter value so intercept is minus 17 uh, 17.18 area coefficient is 24 and the coefficient for radius is 1.02 that means both area and radius are positively uh, affecting whether a sample will be malignant or not if the area increases and the radius also increases that means it will be more and more malignant and all statistical test shows that all these three coefficients are also statistically significant and now I have to go back to something called the AIC AIC as I said is a criteria that I can use to compare between two model so Akai key information criteria can be used to compare between two models which has different number of parameters 
in my previous model it was something 300 something I missed it I have already cleared it but you, uh, 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 you can try and check it again it is around uh, something around 300 whereas for this model which I, I have uh, one extra parameter AIC is 191. The lower AIC value is a better value that means I can say from this AIC value this, this second logistic model with two predictor both the area and the uh, radius of the average radius of nucleus is a better model than the previous one. So, I have created the second logistic uh, regression model, logistic regression classifier, right? And uh, these are two predictor things. So, I will not be able to plot this the way I have plot the previous one, but I can do the evaluation of the model using the same confusion matrix. So, I will do that. So, now I will create the uh, P2 vector, the probability of being malignant for my training data set again, right? And what I will use? I will use the predict function. So, the input will be training data set, train, but the model now will be log it 2 because this is the second model just now I created and I want to calculate the uh, response. So, I perform that prediction. So, the P2 is created, you can see. P2 are fractions, those are the probability for each of the sample to be malignant as per this new model. Now, I am again calling if else function. If this probability for a sample is bigger than 0.5, my threshold that I have decided, I will call it malignant, that means 1, otherwise, I will call it 0. So, the labels are 1 and 0. So, I will uh, store that label data in C2. Now, I will compare this C2 the labels for each sample as per this new logistic regression model with respect to the original labels present in my data set. So, I will use the table function to create the matrix, the confusion matrix the way we have done earlier and I will print it. So, now look at the confusion matrix. Now, 278 sample which were originally benign are also oh, considered as labeled as benign by the my new model, whereas 153 samples which are earlier uh, we know they are malignant are predicted as a malignant by, by new model. So, again here in this case I can calculate sensitivity and specificity. So, I will calculate that first the specificity that is true negative rate. True negative rate is 94.55, it was earlier uh, 93 percent, now it is 94.5 percent slightly increased. Let me uh, calculate the sensitivity for this new model where I have two predictors. Sensitivity is nothing but true positive rate, earlier it was around 76 percent. Now, you can see here it is 86.9. So, that means by adding a new predictor, my sensitivity true positive rate has increased. And in fact, the AIC has also said my model fit is also better because it has a lower value. So, that means I should proceed with my this new second model, second uh, logistic regressor where I have two predictors. And I will end this lecture now by applying this regression model with two predictor logistic regression model on my test data. If you remember I said at the very beginning that some of the data set I have separated and uh, stored as a test sample, right. Uh, so, I will apply that uh, this model, this uh, classifier, logistic regression classifier on that test sample. So, the first thing that I have to read is I have to read the uh, data. So, that uh, that file is read underscore cancer dot csv. So, I am reading that using read dot csv. Now, I will use again the predict function, use the log it to model, the second model, use test data as the input to predict the probabilities. So, that will be stored in p dot test. Next, I will classify these samples, this test sample based on the p dot test, the probabilities either as 1 or 0 malignant or non malignant using the if else function. So, I have got the c dot test vector where the labels predicted labels are there and I will create a confusion matrix for this now by comparing the original label of this sample in the test data. So, I will create that. So, this is my now uh, confusion matrix for my test data. I will calculate the specificity and sensitivity the same way we have done. The specificity true negative rate is 95 percent quite good. It is retaining specificity that we have found for our uh, training data set itself, right. For test data set also the specificity is retained, the true negative rate is retained similar value. 
let me check the sensitivity or the true positive value. Here also it is 80 percent, earlier also it was around uh, 84 percent. So, here also it has retained that uh, or the retained something similar uh, sensitivity. That means, my classifier, the logistic regression classifier that I have created is good enough to actually predict the whether a sample in the test case whether it is a malignant or not. So, that uh, brings me to the end of this lecture. In this lecture, uh, I have shown you how you can create a logistic regression model. Uh, we have started with a single uh, predictor model, then we have shown how to create the confusion matrix, then we have shown how to calculate specificity and sensitivity of that model. Next, I added the another predictor and created the another logistic regression model or classifier and check the confusion matrix and sensitivity and specificity of that. We observe that as I add another predictor, the model has become better, it, its performance has become better and then eventually we applied that uh, classifier that we created using a training data set on a test data set and we have seen uh, it has performed quite well. That is all for this video. Thank you for learning with me today.